The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everybody praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went to the synagogue, as was his custom. Jesus stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. <laughs> Unrolling it, Jesus found the place where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fascinated on him. He began by saying to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Our scripture lessons this morning are great with message. And I couldn't pin down just one thing to share with you today. Because there's such important things about our life that is found in each of our scripture readings. When we look at the book of, not, of Nehemiah at the scripture um, in chapter 8, and we read the verses where they're crying after hearing the scriptures, because at one point, the Torah was lost to them, and then it was found. And so when they read, or when they not read, but when they hear the Torah read to them, it brings them to tears. It's a, it's a beautiful imagery in the book of Nehemiah. And we learn about how the frozen chosen Lutherans cannot do, amen, amen, amen. But we hear how our friends, our Israelite brothers and sisters, lifted their hands in praise to our Lord and said, amen, amen. So sometimes when we look at other faiths and they're up there doing, yeah, brother, you sing it. I got, yeah, amen. Let us not make fun because it is all in our scriptures. And, and we continue in Nehemiah and we hear that Ezra is saying all the men and the women and the children were there worshiping. So anytime we have our youngest members among us and we hear them battling such beautiful sounds or crying out because they're bored, we are thankful because our children need to be with us in worship. And as I say this to you, our children are taken out of worship to go to Sunday school. And not to be mean, but we take them out of worship because nobody wants to stay after to do Sunday school and nobody wants to come early to go to Sunday school. So our children aren't in worship nine months of the year. I put that in your head and I just ask you to live with that thought. Nehemiah is rich in traditions that their heads were bowed and it, depending on which translation you read, they are prostrate on the ground when they hear the words of their Lord. Today, we as Christians no longer do that. But we see our brothers and sisters from Sudan and from other South American, I mean, South African um, faiths. They are prostrate, prostrate on the ground when, they're, when the lessons are read. 
And when they pray, when their leader of their worship prays, they are on the ground. They aren't heads bowed and hands folded so nicely as our us as Protestant Christians do. But they are genuflecting to the Lord. Again, when we see our brothers and sisters from different faiths and different parts of our world worshiping in what we see is such a strange way, remember, when they see us, they think we are strange. Remember that. And then we get to move on to Corinthians. One of Wil Wilton's famous, <laughs> happiest books to read. Because why? <laughs> because in there it says that the man, he be it. And the woman, she not be it. <laughs> and it makes him giggle. And I love it. But this morning in 1 Corinthians, we hear how we are each a part of God's body. How we could not do this with each and every one of you. So today, this morning, Jim put up our numbers. Robert filled our candles and Adam lit them. Sharon marked the Bible so that Wilton could read it. I made the bulletin so you could read it. Esther plays on our instruments so we can sing it. Kathy put together our communion so we can serve one another the feast of our Lord. Now what if Kathy hadn't shown up today? What if Esther called in sick? What would our worship be like today? if not for each and every one of you who are an important part, not just of what happens here, but what happens beyond here. What if we all left this building and said, we're all gonna be pastors this week. <laughs> that would be really hard on Kenny because he needs to be a store owner. And so what would we do if instead Kenny locked the doors up and said, nope, this week we're all pastors? We'd starve. Or we'd all get in our vehicles and go to murder But that's not the point. <laughs> we are each called to do something differently. We have members here who quilt. We have members here who make um, sleeping mats out of grocery bags. We have members here who sing in our choir. We have members here who drive people to places that they can't go because they can't drive that far any longer. We are all important. And if we were all the same thing, nothing would get done. And when you look closer at the 1 Corinthians message, you hear these things. You hear worship, and you hear education, and you hear fellowship, and you hear mission. See, when pastor says we're going to break up into committees, you see that these are biblically based things. That pastors just aren't putting committees together to give y'all something to do. Mission for us gets split into outreach and to service. And then, of course, a committee that we won't find in the Bible is our property committee. But that's good stewardship, to attend to our building and our grounds. And stewardship is absolutely biblically based. So next month, when I ask you, what committees would you like to serve on? Know that what you do is important because nobody else can do what you do in the way you do it. We need big toes because if we didn't have them, we could hardly stand up. Imagine your body without your big toe. It's 
it would not be fun. We need the big toes and we need the thumbs and we need the noses and we need all those things to make this body of Christ go out into the world and do service and do outreach. Think of the benefit that's taking place today. Where would it be if only the firemen said, okay, we want to do this and we're not going to ask anybody else to help us. How many firemen of you are there? 20? 25? They could not do it alone. It is taking a community to put together this benefit for two members of this community that are so loved. And it's because of all of you and all of our brothers and sisters outside of these walls loving and caring for Richie and Gina that are making this event possible. You are living out 1 Corinthians today. And we are thankful for that. And finally, we hear from our gospel lesson. Some really, usually when pastors preach on this, they preach about you can't send your loved ones back home because they aren't going to be welcomed there. When we read, you read further into Luke, you know that next week they're going to chase Jesus to the top of a hill in hopes of pushing him off because they can't believe that a carpenter's son can be saying this. But today what I want you to hear, what I want you to go back home and look through this, this chapter 4, I want you to hear how the Holy Spirit is leading Jesus and showing Jesus the way his ministry will play out. And the Holy Spirit is among us here in everything that we do. She's like that little angel that sits on your shoulder. There used to be a commercial that had an angel over here and a devil over here. I think one was telling you to eat parquet and the other one said, no butter. <laughs> That's, that's the Holy Spirit sitting there saying to you, go out and live out 1 Corinthians. Go and do and be. You hear Jesus telling us this. The time of God's Holy Spirit is today. It's right now. It's the Holy Spirit that speaks to us when we hear God saying this. Child of God, live this day as if it were your first day. Child, live this day as if it were your last day. Child, live this day as if it were your only day. Amen.